Beneath the relentless sun sprawled the savannah kingdom of Udo. Here, amongst the whispering of tall grasses and the guttural song of unseen lions, lived Eweka, a prince whose destiny was whispered on the wind. Born under the fiery gaze of Oshun, a warrior goddess, Eweka's faith was intertwined with the rise of a new kingdom, destined to become Benin. Eweka was no ordinary son. Whispers of prophecy swirled around him even before his first cry pierced the stillness of the savannah. The wise Ifa priestess foretold of a child marked by the goddess, bearing on his skin the symbol of a coiled python, a harbinger of power and leadership. Erica's childhood was a tapestry woven with the echoes of prophecy and the harsh realities of royal life. His days were spent honing his skills with spear and shield, wrestling with lions and learning the delicate dance of courtly intrigue. But Eweka yearned for more. The savannah seemed too small for his restless spirit. The confines of Udo too restrictive for his burgeoning ambition. His dreams were filled with the visions of a sprawling kingdom, a city of glistering brass and terracotta, adorned with the whispers of his name, Oba Eweka, the first king of Benin. The spark that ignited Eweka's destiny came not from a triumphant battle or a whispered prophecy, but from a humbling clay pot, a visiting trader from Igodo Migodo, a distant land blessed with the knowledge of bronze casting, presented the pot to Eweka's mother, the queen. Within its smooth curves, Eweka saw not just a vessel, but a symbol of possibility, the potential to forge a kingdom unlike any other. Driven by an unyielding hunger for knowledge, Eweka embarked on a clandestine journey under the guise of a hunting expedition. Reaching Igodomigodo, he disguised himself as a commoner, immersing himself in the secrets of bronze working. He toiled under the sun, mastering the fierce dance of furnace and mold, forging not just metal, but the foundations of his dream. Months blurred into years, each casting revealing a deeper understanding of the craft. Eweka's hands, no longer calloused from wielding a spear, bore the marks of fire and molten metal. Finally, his apprenticeship complete, he returned to Udo, laden not with the trophies of the hunt, but with the secret of forging a new future. Back in his kingdom, Eweka faced skepticism and resistance. The queen, fearing the consequences of upsetting the delicate balance of power, hesitated to embrace her son's vision. But Eweka, resolute and foiled by prophetic whispers, persisted. He gathered talented young craftsmen, igniting their hearts with the flame of his ambition. Together, they built furnaces their hammers clanging a symbol of change. From the fiery embrace of the furnaces, Erika's vision took shape. Bronzes emerged, glistering with the sun's reflection. Intricately carved masks, ceremonial bells, and powerful warriors 
frozen in metal mid-stride. Each piece resonated with the spirit of Benin. A testament to the kingdom's nascent power and cultural richness. The whispers of air workers' bronze works, like bird song carried on the wind, reached far and wide. Traders, lured by the promise of untold beauty, flocked Udo. The kingdom prospered, becoming a hub of commerce and artistry. Eweka, now a leader in modern name, fostered diplomacy and alliances. His charisma and the growing wealth of Benin drawing neighboring kingdoms under his banner. But a king's path is rarely paved with smooth sand. Enemies, envious of Benin's Bulgarian power, plotted in the shadows, raids on outlying villages, whispers of discontent sown amongst the nobles. These were the thorns that pricked Eweka's crown. Yet, the fire of Oshun burned bright within him. He led his people into battle. His spear, a dance of fury and defense. His bronze warriors, an impenetrable wall against invaders. Eweka's victories resonated across the savannah solidifying his claim as the Oba of Benin. The whispers of prophecy transformed into the roars of a lion, proclaiming him the son of destiny. He united diverse communities under his rule, establishing the Council of Elders to ensure justice and prosperity for all. His reign ushered in a golden age where art and trade flourish and in the name of Benin resonated a drum beat in the annals of history. But even kings are not immune to the passage of time. As age painted silver streaks on his head, Eweka knew that his own destiny was nearing its end. He called his loyal advisors and his sons, each a prince in his own right, before him. With a voice heavy with wisdom and prophecy, he laid out the path for Benin's future, ensuring a smooth transition of power and the continuation of his legacy. His final acts was a testament to his love for Benin and the dedication to the divine Oshun, drawing upon the secrets learned in Igodomidogu. Eweka commissioned the creation of a magnificent bronze head, a likeness of Oshun herself. It wouldn't be just a statue, but a vessel imbued with the goddess's spirit and destined to become the heart of a new religious center. With meticulous care, the craftsmen poured their skills into the project. The final piece, unveiled on the eve of Eweka's passing, was breathtaking. Oshun's regal visage seemed to shimmer in life. As searing eyes gazing upon the future of Benin, the people gasped, awed by the artistry and sensing the potent presence of the goddess within the metal. Eweka's final days were spent witnessing the construction of the ocean shrine, its walls rising amidst the bustling city. He personally chose the site a sacred grove where the ocean river whispered secrets to the wind. In its final act, its kingdom would become a bridge between mortals and the divine. Forever bound to the powerful goddess, 
who had blessed him with his destiny. As the last sunbeams of his life tinged the savannah with crimson, Eweka was carried to the banks of the ocean river. The air, trumped with anticipation, mingled with the keening of mourners and the redeeming drumming of celebration. With a final peaceful breath, Eweka's spirit crossed the veil, joining the ancestors and the watchful gaze of ocean. Though his physical presence faded, Eweka's legacy roared on. Benin, the kingdom he forged from whispers and molten bowls, became a beacon of cultural splendor. The bronzes, testament to his vision and skill, became coveted treasures, carried far and wide, spreading the name of Benin like seeds on the wind. And at the heart of it all, the shrines of Oshun pulsed with the life force of the goddess, a silent testament to the final act of the son of destiny, a king who dared to dream and build a kingdom worthy of gods. The story of Eweka is not just one of conquest and power, but one of ambition, artistic expression, and a deep connection to the divine. His legacy shines brightest not in the clash of spears, but in the intricate curves of bronze, the vibrant rhythm of trade, and the silent whisper of a goddess's gaze. The sun of destiny's life and final act serve as a reminder that greatness can be found in many forms and that even kings in their final moments can leave behind a legacy that resonated through time, echoing in the whispers of a kingdom named Benin. <laughs>